So you know those tiny side pods on the Mercedes, are they actually legal? And there's also a lot of stuff in those side pods. So how did they just shuffle all of the things around to make it fit? And what's this weird part of the car that sticks out? Well, we've got scarves back to explain. So Merck have rocked up to testing with these genius side pods that look to be helping the floor work more effectively as well as creating more outwash, dealing with the tire wake and potentially reducing drag. But it does seem weird that they weren't running them back in Barcelona. Were they keeping it secret for Bahrain? Well, let me pass you over to Scarps. This was always um, the planned Bahrain spec. This isn't a reaction to anything that they've seen. And uh, some people are actually asking on social media, is it a reaction to what Williams had done on their, their car? No, no, absolutely not. There's no way they could have developed a complete side pod package uh, in the time since they've seen the Williams. All of the mechanical parts, a lot of the bodywork, uh, and including the radiators as well. They were, apparently they were the same radiators they ran um, in Barcelona as they have on this Bahrain car. All you didn't have in Barcelona was the shape of the side pods and the front of the floor. They've added a few other bits to the car as well, but these are the kind of fundamental pieces. And so Barcelona therefore was really a shakedown, quite literally, of the mechanics of the car, of the kind of the rolling chassis, if you will. And now Bahrain will be the aerodynamic test to see if this side pod is working in the way that they're expecting it to. And that was very sneaky of Mercedes. And we think they were keeping it under wraps until they could test it properly. But as I mentioned earlier, there is a lot in those side pods and they serve a number of very important functions. Firstly, they are the main cooling inlet for the car. There are coolant radiators in there, an intercooler, cooling the air that goes into the turbo, as well as oil cooling systems and electronics. All pretty important stuff. Well, if you want the car to work properly, that is. But if we look at the new Mercedes, it's clear they've had to do some engineering Tetris to fit it all in. Well, a couple of things really. First of all, they've got quite a large uh, radiator above the gearbox, which is being fed by the raw hoop, and they've had that there for many years. And then they have the, the shape of the monocoque uh, around the fuel tank area, just behind the driver, and they're able to kind of crease that and push the radiators in quite deeply into the sort of center of the car. But really, it's not necessarily about how small the radiators are. What they've done is just kind of repackaged the volume of bodywork that sits around it, and that volume will be taken up in getting air to the radiator, obviously the radiator itself, and then somehow getting the heat out from the radiators to the back of the car. And through that, you can see that they've used lots of louvers on the car. They've still got quite a high Coke bottle exit on the back of the car as well. So really, as much as everyone's calling these like zero pods, which kind of irks me a bit because they're still side pods there and they've still got inlets, they've still got quite big radiators. Um, these are just kind of repackaged. But with all this rearranging, it's also revealed a bit of the car that you don't normally see, the crash structure, and they look a little bit bizarre. Yeah, so these side impact spars or uh, crash tubes, a lot of people call them as well, um, they're a little bit kind of counterintuitive in how they work because they look very spiky. Um, and indeed they do, uh, and they're only ever really covered with a very thin skin of carbon fiber bodywork. So the bodywork of the side pod really isn't doing anything for, for the uh, crash protection. So what these tubes are designed to do is when there's something hits them on the end, they'll just crumple up like you have, as you say, with a, a road car or with a nose cone on a, a race car. They just crumple inwards and absorb the load so that when you're having a kind of a T-bone accident with something solid, it's just decelerating the car to prevent the driver's head being accelerated and their body being accelerated too much. And they are this cone shape, so they slow the car gradually. So the cross section increases as the crash happens. So slowing the car, well, as gradually as you can from 200 miles an hour, but most importantly, protecting the driver. And of course, normally they are covered with the side pod, but Mercedes has had to cover them with this weird bit of bodywork. Exposed crash structure at the top there, inside that fairing, is no more dangerous in a side impact to another car or a driver in another car than having conventional side pods. There's, there's nothing unsafe about this as well. So I think that's something that we kind of do need to stress. Now, one of the questions that we've all been thinking is with these tiny inlets. How are Mercedes getting enough air through the car to cool it properly? Well, Scarbs reckons it will be fine. So now the inlet for the side pod, rather being wide like this, like on most cars, it's vertical. And this basically then means you can bring the side pods in 
but still keep this very wide base. And there's one other trick that they've got is that these very tall inlets that you've got work incredibly well on a race car. Now, many years ago, I was told by several race car designers that if you want to feed air to the side pods, the best airflow is actually just off the side of the, the monocoque coming down the sides of the car, which is why in the old days you used to have that shaped side pod. The you know, Mercedes have always been right on the margins with cooling for their cars uh, and it's caught them out a few times. Last year, they seemed much better. And from what I've seen here, I don't think there's anything on this car that suggests to me that they've gone more one way or the other. Uh, you can see they've got plenty of options for cooling louvers, which really works to bring the, the bodywork in very tight. So I don't think that's a clue. So with all of that, these look like a good solution, but are they actually legal? Well, there are four main things that they have to meet in order to be legal. First of all, you've got this exposed crash structure. So first of all, that isn't the crash structure. The crash structure is a tube that sits inside that. What you see there is just bodywork. Uh, so first of all, that means that one regulation about an exposed crash structure is, is, is met. And then you have kind of the side pod inlet. That's legal. The radiuses and all of the other kind of geometric things you've got to meet appear to be met by this um, fairing around the crash structure. So that's all, that's all legal as far as I'm concerned. Then the next one is these fins on the mirror mount. Now, a lot of the teams seem to be finding an issue with that, but they are on a lot of other cars too. I don't think that's a mirror mount in any way that you could kind of envision a means to stabilize a teeny plastic mirror uh, on a car. But as far as I can see, they are legal. Then some people mistook the lap timing trigger as a cooling outlet, which wouldn't be legal, but this is all as expected. So no issue there. And as far as I can see, this car is legal um, in its general concept. So I've got nothing to worry about. There. Now it's very much yet to be seen how this does in real running. And we don't really know, but Russell seemed to be really fighting the car yesterday. And that is very likely nothing to do with this side pod design, but it does show that the car still needs some more testing time. Check out this video where we explain what Mercedes are trying to do with these zero pods. And I will catch you in the next one.